In 2011, American Airlines placed what was at the time the largest aircraft order in aviation history. Comprised of 460 single-aisle aircraft at a whopping $38 billion in list price, this deal was set to completely overhaul American's domestic fleet. However, while the number of planes was staggering, the type of planes that American ordered was the real shocker. And the ramifications of the deal ultimately led Boeing to build the 737 MAX. So does that mean that American Airlines is to blame for the creation of this troubled jet? Let me explain. In order to understand the drivers behind American's record-setting deal, we need to take a closer look at the history of the 737's main competitor, the Airbus A320. While the plane is ubiquitous today, back in 1999, the program was a major underdog. While Airbus had already cemented itself as a commercial aviation powerhouse, up to that point, it had delivered just one third as many A320s as Boeing had 737s. But in that year, the A320 program pulled off its first truly massive coup. JetBlue, a brand new airline headed by airline visionary David Nealman, decided to place an order of 48 A320 jets. Originally, JetBlue didn't want the A320, they wanted the 737. However, Nealman encountered resistance during negotiations with Boeing. The sales folks over at Boeing believed JetBlue had no intention of purchasing the A320, and as such they played hardball and repeatedly rejected JetBlue's requests for a discounted order. Now, Boeing eventually ended up offering the 737 to JetBlue at a discounted price, but not until the airline had already been extensively courted by Airbus and recognized the value of their planes. By the time Boeing was willing to negotiate, the damage had been done. Feeling slighted, JetBlue went with the A320. Since then, the airline has placed an additional 304 orders for jets in that aircraft family and has never once bought a Boeing airplane. This deal was the first sign that Boeing was not properly giving Airbus its due. That disrespect continued when Airbus decided to launch its A320neo. Airbus launched this revamped version of the plane in 2010, just a year or so removed from the low point of the financial crisis. While the global economy was still trying to recover, Airbus saw robust long-term growth in commercial aviation, and stagnation amongst its competition. Thus, they debuted a new version of the A320, which featured brand new engines and new winglet technology. Theoretically, this would make the plane 20% more efficient than the 737NG. However, Boeing dismissed this new Challenger. Boeing's chief of commercial airplanes at the time, Jim Alba, told his employees that Airbus was likely to go way over budget on the program, and at the end of the day, it wasn't a plane that airlines really wanted. Given that Boeing was also intensely focused on ramping up 787 production at the time, Alba suggested that Boeing bide its time and wait until the 2020s to launch an all new single aisle airplane. This is where American Airlines comes into play. Around this time, American was looking to reshape its fleet with new, fuel-efficient aircraft. Up to that point, American Airlines had only ever ordered American-built jets, and it was widely believed that that trend would continue. However, much like they did with JetBlue in the late 90s, Airbus mounted an all-out charm offensive. Airbus's chief of sales, Jim Leahy, frequently visited and dined with American Airlines executives. Meanwhile, Boeing kinda just stood pat, making neither a real effort to win American's business, nor design a new plane to compete with the A320neo. Over the course of the next 12 months, the possibility of American placing an all Airbus order continued to grow. And eventually, Airbus came to Boeing with an ultimatum. Either commit to building a revamped 737 to compete with the Neo, 
or completely lose out on their business. Having been such an important customer for decades, Boeing caved to Americans' demands. What resulted was the 737 MAX. In a very short period of time, Boeing went from denying the viability of the NEO to essentially copying its formula. The MAX also sported new engines and winglets, ensuring it would be better positioned to match the NEO's fuel burn. American would go on to place an order for 460 single-aisle aircraft. 260 of those would come from Airbus, and 200 of those would come from Boeing. While Boeing managed to snag a share of the deal, it was widely seen as a massive loss. Boeing leadership was now fully in tune with the gravity of the situation. If a longtime loyal customer like American went with Airbus, others could follow. What resulted was a rushed development process. Boeing tried to bring the MAX to market as quickly as possible, while also pushing the limits of the airframe to maximize efficiency. While they ultimately succeeded in doing both, concessions were made when it came to safety. And sadly, we all know what happened as a result. So was American Airlines to blame for the 737 MAX? No. It was a combination of poor foresight and hubris on the part of Boeing's executive leadership team at the time. However, this deal, and American Airlines, will forever be inextricably linked with the 737 MAX. If you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.